Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, my name is Evidence and in today's video I am going to show you how to explain your gradient boosting model, alright? So in this video I am going to be making a reference to something called GB model. In the last video I showed you how to build a gradient boosting model and I called um, the gradient boosting classifier model GB model. So if you see me making reference to something called GB model, just know it's the gradient boosting classifier model that I use to fit and predict my data frame. All right. So that's what GB model is. Just wanted to make that clear from the get go. So if you look at um, the documentation for gradient boosting model, you see it has something called future importances. All right. This is one of the attributes you get access to after you have fit your data frame through your model. So you have future importances and this future importances is going to help us kind of explain our model. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get a future importances. So if I do GB, dot, GB model dot future importances, there you have the future importances for this model. But then what does this future importances mean? Well, I have a huge block of text here to kind of like explain it to you. What future importances mean? So, you know, like if you do a regression problem, you end up with coefficients. Well, if you do a classification problem, you end up with most times uh, future importances. So future importance is how each future decreases the tree models impurity. So this is for, this is if you're talking about a, deci a decision tree, right? So when a tree splits a node, it uses the impurity, which is information gain. And this is the equivalent of the variance. This is the equivalent to variance for a regression model to decide which future to use to split the node. The future that produces the lowest impurity will be used to do the split. This means that we can kind of use our future importance to gauge how important each future is. This might allow us to achieve the same high accuracy using less features by just selecting the most important features from our data frame. So in summary, future importance is how much each future contributes to decreasing the weighted impurity of the decision tree model. And of course, this is important because if you know which features are important in decreasing the uh, weighted impurity, then let's say if you started your modeling with 20 features, but only six features are important, you can just select those six features and work with those six features and get rid of the other 14 features, you know, because those other 14 features is not adding any improvement it's not adding any value to the model so those six features you can just work with it and still have the same level of accuracy so less complexity higher accuracy and i found um this blog post on data towards data science medium post that kind of does a good job of explaining future importance and then uh, what exactly is a random forest right in random forest the model the future importance is the average importance from the many different trees. So a random forest model is just a combination of many different trees. And so it's a gradient boosting model. A gradient boosting model is also a combination of many different trees. And whenever you have a model like random forest or gradient boosting, model the future importance you get is the average importance from all the different trees that the random forest or gradient boosting model has so if random forest and gradient boosting are both both tree based models and what is the difference between random forest and gradient boosting so well first of all yes they are both um, tree ensembles the difference is in how they assemble those trees, okay? Random forest builds each tree decision, each um, decision tree independent of each other and take average scores at the end. 
but gradient boosting builds one tree at a time using what it learned from the previous tree to help build the next tree and it takes average scores along the way as it is building the trees. So this again blog post from Data Science Central kind of does a good you know decent job of explaining the difference between a random forest model and a gradient boosting model. They are both tree ensembles. The difference is in how they assemble the trees and how they take their average importance scores. So with this background information on gradient boosting model, let's go ahead and actually look at these future importances. What does these individual numbers mean? Well, these individual numbers contribute or correspond to each feature in my data frame. So if I go ahead and pull up the data frame, you can use your X train or your S test to look at this, just a preview. You can see like these are the features of the data frame. And um, this data frame is trying to predict wine quality and wine quality is our Y feature, you know, our Y target. So, and these are the S features. So each one of these future potencies correspond with each um, columns here. So if I do S dot columns, you can see that these are the columns corresponding to these future importances right here. But just looking at these future importances and looking at these columns, it's kind of difficult to quickly make conclusions about which features are important and which features are not important. So in the next two sessions, I am going to combine these columns with their corresponding future importances and then um, we are going to create a visualization using them so it's kind of easier to quickly see which features are the most important. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and put our future importance and columns in a variable and then let's call um all right so now we are going to create a pandas series between our columns and our importance and let's just call it gbcof or something like that and let's do pd.series so earlier in this notebook i did import pandas as pd so pd stands for pandas and the first thing you provide is the data and the second thing you provide is the um, indexes, in this case, the columns. So let's just do... So now, as you can see, each one of these future importances has been lined up and associated with their corresponding columns, which is pretty cool. And now we are going to create a visualization from this and um, kind of see which ones are most important. I mean, this right here, is definitely an improvement from having it in this format and in this format, but it's still not like the best way to present it. So we are going to be doing that using matplotlib. And um, we are just gonna do gb dot sort values, we want to sort the values. And then dot plot dot bar h dot and then I want to set the color equal to red. So I am able to do this because I have matplotlib in my environment and adding a semicolon and um, remove this object print out right here. All right, so basically first I'm sorting my panda series, then I'm plotting it using matplotlib and then I want a bar graph and I want a horizontal bar graph. That's what this H stands for. And I want the color to be red. Okay. Make sure you have matplotlib in your environment. If not, you won't be able to do this. So based on um, this, we can kind of see that alcohol is very important. Volatile acidity, residual sugar, density. You know, so we can quickly and easily see a preview of the most important features from our data frame. So this is one technique, this is one way to 
explain your data frame, to explain your model. There's different other techniques. You can use something like Shapley box plot, confusion metrics. You can use um, a classification report. And I have those videos on my channel. You can watch them individually. But right now, I'm quickly, I am just going to do a classification report to show you the precision, the recall, and the F1 score of this model. And in a different video, like I said earlier, I go into detail about precision, recall, F1 score, what is it, and how to calculate it, and how to get it from a uh, confusion matrix and things like that. So let's do from sklearn.metrics, import classification report, and then we do print classification report. And then we pass in our true value, which is our y test, and then pass in our predicted value, which is this is for the gradient boosting model. All right, and it even gives us the accuracy score here too. So this is another way to kind of like explore your model a little bit. You can um, get the precision for your model, the recall, and the F1 score. And like I said a few seconds ago, I have a whole video on this. Um, you can get um, the classification report for this model, another way to explain it. And then you can also get um, the confusion metrics, okay? And in a different video, I go into detail about how to create a confusion metrics and how to calculate precision record and F1 score from a confusion metrics. But in this video, I'll just show you the confusion metrics for this gradient boosting model. All right, so this is the confusion matrix for this gradient boosting model. And basically, um, how to interpret this is you have, you'll be like, so 414 times the value was actually six and it was predicted to be six. You know, 147 times the value was actually five, but it was predicted to be six. You know, um, 16 times the value is actually eight and it was predicted to be eight. That's kind of how you interpret a confusion matrix. And this is one another technique for like explaining your models and kind of looking at it. And the type of model explanation you choose kind of dependent on what your end goal is, what you're looking to get out of your model. All right. And of course, um, you can watch that video on confusion matrix to get, learn more about it. But um, yeah, that's basically it. You can use the confusion matrix, you can use the classification reports, you can use diagrams like this to kind of help you to explain your model a little bit and understand which features are important and understand the performance of your model, how you, your model is performing. That's basically it for this video. You can get the notebook for this video over at machinelearningeducation.com. And once you are here, you can cl click on free data science resources and be able to get access to this page. And this page is where you get my notebook that I use in today's videos and any notebook that I use in my other videos. So I create a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of blog posts, a lot of content, and I just find it easier and more straightforward to take all my notebooks and put them under one platform. And here I also have my videos and I also have my blog posts in here. I just find it easier to put all my notebooks inside one platform. So go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free to get access to the notebook used in today's video. You can also visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs. And as time goes by, by I'm going to add more and more stuff to my data science blogs. And if you are here, you can also click on free data science resources to be able to get to this page. Thank you for watching. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.